Ben Carson is a former U.S. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, and he uh, is with us. Um, Dr. Carson, I believe, if we can pull him up on the screen. There he is. I see you. Um, we have, sorry for the breaking news, sir, and I wanted to get to you right away. Um, I, I think I'd like to start with your general reflections overnight as you slept on the news of the Derek Chauvin trial and the outcome there, how you see it, and then the possibility of everyone moving forward in the way that you've laid out in an op-ed in The Washington Post this week. Well, first of all, I wasn't surprised by the verdict. I mean, it was pretty obvious that uh, this police officer was way outside the norm. He's not supported by anybody that I know of including his supervisors and, and fellow police officers. So to try to take what he did and make that seem like the norm that requires, you know, a dissection of the police department in Minneapolis seems a little bit extreme. Uh, but I think it plays to a narrative that there's systemic racism and therefore we need to be on the forefront of eliminating it. Uh, could, I, could I interrupt I you there, there though, there uh, a, sir, there and have place. You, sir, let me have you listen to President Biden yesterday, who used that very phrase, systemic racism. Let's listen here. It was a murder in the full light of day, and it ripped the blinders off for the whole world to see the systemic racism the vice president just referred to. The systemic racism is a stain on our nation's soul. <clears throat> the knee on the neck of justice for black Americans. Today's verdict is a step forward. Nothing can ever bring their brother, their father back. But this can be a giant step forward in the march toward justice in America. You know, that reasonable people can see things differently on this. Um, in terms of his perspective, how do you react to that? And basically, they want to move forward. They say they said to the Floyd family yesterday that more reforms are coming, and, and, and they could be, but Congress is going to have to try to pass those. Well, do we need some reforms? A absolutely. There are things that can be done, and we can do those much better if we work together rather than trying to demonize the system based on occurrences that are quite infrequent. And uh, there, there are things that the police could use, for instance, that are non-lethal, that are very effective in immobilizing people. We need to move forward on, on those kinds of things. But, you know, the president, I think, could probably do much better by saying, we have a system in place. It works, as you've seen, by the verdict that was done here. Do we need to make improvements? Yes, and let's work together to do that. It seems to me that would be much more presidential. When you wrote in the Washington Post this week, you said moving our focus from equality to equity won't defeat racism. It's another kind of racism. Um, and you wrote that proponents of equity see no problem with treating groups of people differently based solely on race, as long as it serves their agenda. This is what we used to call racism, and those not blindly blinded by identity politics still recognize it as such. Give you a chance to tell viewers here more about what you think there. Well, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spent a lot of time trying to get people to not look at external characteristics which they cannot change and which they cannot help, and instead to look at the things that you can change and the things that you can help, such as your character. What kind of person are you? Shouldn't we be paying more attention to that? than to external characteristics. You know, that's what animals do. Animals, you know, base a lot of what they do on external characteristics because they don't have the mental capacity to dissect further into what's really important. We do. So let's utilize that. I, I, it just infuriates me when I see us acting so immaturely and we have so much more capacity, and we can work together, we can solve these problems, but there are those who want to use every instance to drive stakes of division into everything, be it race, be it age, be it income, be it religion, it doesn't matter, just drive stakes of division in it. And, uh, you know, yeah. we will destroy ourselves as a nation if we don't wake up. I always appreciate your approach and grace and um, tone on these things. Thank you so much, Dr. Carson. Thank you, Dana.